I actually had my first beer when I was in a high school German trip trying beer for the first time and, and I was just like, oh, this is a great experience. Uh, but then of course, after you know uh, about you know three weeks, I had to go back home and be a normal 16 year old and then I couldn't have beer again until I was in college. I was actually in one of my German classes and we had to give a presentation. But I had a classmate whose topic in his German presentation was how to brew beer. And he had, you know, one of these, you know, homebrew kits. He brought us beer to class, and so we all got to drink his beer. I don't remember it being amazing beer, but I was like, he made this, and it's like, that's pretty much all chemistry. I can do this. You know, for me, a, a cool thing about it was understanding the science behind it. And, you know, the coolest things about beer uh, is in malt. The thing is, like, what's malt? You know, what makes it not just barley anymore, right? And so there's a whole process referred to as the malting process. And what that really involves is taking that barley corn, that seed, and then germinating it. So they get it wet and they blow air through it. There's a whole you know, modern method of doing it so that you get really good results all the time. But the key thing is you know, that it has to germinate and you get little rootlets and then you basically, it gets kilned. And so it gets heated up and they knock the little rootlets off and they heat it up. It's like, well, why do they do all of it? We kiln it, or maltsters kiln it, I don't. Uh, maltsters kiln it. And so that basically stops everything. It kind of puts it almost into suspended animation. What happens though is it's expressed all of these enzymes. All right, these enzymes, the most important ones are called amylases. Uh, and so these amylases can break down starches. So these have like, you know, millions of enzymes inside of them that can then, as soon as I, you know, activate them, how do we activate them is, you know, we do something called a mash. And so we grind this up. I mean, we're not making a flour. We just kind of crack the grain, get little pieces of it. Like you can literally do it in your mouth. If you crack it and you chew it, you're actually starting to mash the grain. But the whole thing is these enzymes are now active. They're breaking down to simple sugars. And those simple sugars are ultimately what the yeast is going to convert into ethanol. And that's just one type of malt. And most beers are more complex than that. Many have other types of kiln malts. And so this is like a chocolate malt in here. So if you imagine a porter or stout, this is basically malt that's just been kiln longer, right? This was just kiln long enough to kind of lock in those enzymes. But this is brought up to higher temperatures. Well, what happens is it's more chemistry. Right, we get a process called the Maillard reaction. It's the same kind of browning you get like if you're cooking a steak. The idea is you wanna get a nice sear on the steak and you get the brown color, the flavor. In beer, right, what makes that rich porter, rich stout in there is that Maillard reaction. And so it's really, it's simple sugars reacting with amino acids. It's more chemistry. When I brew now, it's like, I'm like, okay, how can I manipulate things? How can I understand the chemistry better? Um, and that really got me interested in hop chemistry as well. I actually grow my own hops, and these are actually dried hops that I grew at my house. You can see inside, there's this yellow particulate matter, this resin, right? And so this is what contains most of the oils that give you that aroma, but also what gives beer its bitterness. Because if you didn't have hops in beer, it would be too sweet. And then in addition to that, to get even more aroma, people will actually have hops after the boil. So they've already fermented the beer, and they do a process called dry hopping. When I brew, I'm often, I'm usually adding hops at at least three places, if not four. I, I love hoppy beers. And so I love to brew, because hoppy beers are a good place to experiment because there's so many hops out there. I could probably get a hundred different hop varieties if I wanted to spend the money. And all the different combinations of them too, because there's you know, this idea of where, you know, one plus one does not always equal two, right? Where you're combining them. Um, and then getting back to chemistry is, sometimes when you add those dry hops or you add them while the beer's fermenting, yeast can actually transform some of those essential oils and compounds into something different. And so you have chemistry going on during fermentation besides just making alcohol and consuming that sugar. Um, and then of course, I haven't really talked about yeast very much, but you know, different yeast is another place to really you know, um, experiment as well because you know, we have not just ale yeast and lager yeast, but there's, there's you know, I'm trying to remember how many different ale yeast strains I could get now if I wanted to. But you know, in, in even commercial operations, there's probably 50 or 60 different ale strains, and um, you know, at least half as many lager strains that are in use, and they're all going to be a little bit different. Two different beers here, um, and actually, one of these beers I, I made—they're both fairly recent. 
Uh, this one is basically like a folder inspired ESB, and I just made these labels for fun. Um, we give, I give them as gifts to our seniors um, in the chemistry department. Uh, extra special bitter is what Fuller's is, um, and I didn't want students to be scared of bitter because it's actually not that bitter. And I can open that one um, first, but, and then this one's called The Graduator, uh, and it's a Doppelbach, and many of the Doppelbachs traditionally end in Ator. The first one is actually called like Salvator or Salvator. Uh, like Saint Vator, uh, and so um, it was a beer the monks um, that made it, the Augustiner monks would drink during Lent. They would fast from food, but they could still drink beer. Um, but it's a Doppelbach, so this is actually a really strong uh, malty beer. Oh. All right, so, and I always leave a little bit in the bottom of the bottle for homebrew, because the there is yeast in the bottom of the bottle, and so you don't want to get that into the beer. Um, and so it's got a little bit, um, it's got just a little bit of haze to this last here at the bottom of there, but it's got a nice golden color. Uh, and so an ESB, despite the bitter, that's the part of that from Fuller's, is that it was just, the name is more historic. That bitter is meant with more bitter than what's called an English mild. Um, and so it should have a very, I talked about those esters. So those kind of like, that fruitiness you're getting, that's those esters that the yeast produces. And so I actually use the Fuller's yeast um, in this beer. And so it's giving that kind of fruitiness, that almost marmalade kind of aroma. That's all coming from the yeast. Um, and I use the same maltster's malt um, in the beer as they did. So I wasn't doing a clone so much as an homage uh, to their beer. But it's got a nice kind of clean uh, flavor. You definitely get that. There is a little bit of bitterness at the finish, but it's not like an overpowering IPA. So when I'm teaching students, either my beer class or some of the chemistry majors that are you know, having beer for, you know, a good beer for me some of the first times is, make sure you're drinking beer out of uh, ideally a glass or at least a cup. Don't drink it straight from the bottle. It, you know, look at the color, you know, is that, you know, is, is that a golden color? Is that a copper color? Is that an amber color? When you taste it, don't just drink it, like take a second, right? And evaluate, like, what are you picking up on flavor wise? And as you understand the aromas, the flavors as well, you can kind of get, well, what is that? You know, and so I can be like, oh, that's a fruity ester. Well, what, is, what does that mean? Well, you know, if a student's asked me that in class, I can draw it out on the board, uh, right? We can look at the, the chemical structure. If you can really learn to appreciate it, it can really, you know, expand your palate and not just in beer, but you can expand your palate into wine, into spirits, into fine foods, right? It's a really like, I mean, you know, some people are like, oh, I really didn't, I've never really tried um, you know, a lot of different cheeses and they'll have beers and pair them with cheeses and like how do those flavors meld and come together and it really, you know, you have this kind of, you know, um, symbiosis of different flavors uh, and, and pairing things together that just kind of, you know, gets into more cool biochemistry and, you know, understanding how our sense of smell and taste really work.